Hi internet, it's Maggie Bot. I'm here this week to do a quick review of Steampark from uh, Cranio Creations and Yellow Games. Uh, previous to this, I can only really remember playing one other Cranio Creation, which was, um, what was it? It was Sewer Pirate. And it was just this weird little rats in a sewer collecting french fries game that was decently fun. Obviously built for families and interesting, interesting components. So I actually think you'll see that mirrored here a lot. Uh, my normal reviews are done for Euro games with a little more meat to them, but this I feel is a really nice game for those of you that have kids. So this is the kind of game you can play with really almost any age. I'd say as long as they're reading down to about 6, 7, wherever the cards will not bother them that much, you can play it with your entire family. So it plays up to four players and what this is is a roller coaster tycoon board game. Uh, literally, they're not trying to mask it, but you build all these little amusement rides and then invite robot friends to come along and join you in their merriment for the rest of the game. And that's actually, oh no, <laughs> robot down. Um, that's how you win, is by inviting robots to come and visit your um, amusement park and ride your rides and that gives you money. So, in general, I love this game for not being super mean, for having a few interactive bits. You can buy things out from under people and um, you're competing at the very beginning to roll and re-roll your dice till you're happy with them, but the first person that does is happy with their dice gets an initiative token that gives them a pretty big prize and then the second one is a less good prize and the last person the snoozer here um, that person actually gets a pretty good detriment to waiting around until the perfect dice rolls came up. The game is played over six rounds and each person is outfitted with one base to put your amusement rides on. So you'll see that like a big amusement ride would fit on three spaces and there are some rules based on the spaces of where you can and cannot build. Um, uh, an amusement ride can only ever share one space with something the same color but nothing of different colors can ever touch each other so you really have to space these out well and during the course of the game of course you can expand out the number of spaces and get a bigger amusement park um, which can be incredibly rewarding depending on some of the cards you draw. And these cards are half luck and half kind of refining your turns to try and earn them. Um, they will benefit you for having blank rolled dice which are you know, worthless, you can't really use them for anything, um, green spaces, a little bit of everything, even specific die rolls that you rolled. Um, so over the course of six rounds you are building your amusement parks, inviting your robots there, and most ro die rolls you have come with these little dirt tokens. And there's a few ways of getting rid of them. One is a die roll and one is this little toilet that you can build onto your amusement park. And dirt is really bad. At the end of the game, you're going to lose money based on how much dirt you've earned over the course of the game. So you fall onto the scale and you lose a certain amount of money, which is your, that's how you win, is having the most money at the end of the game. All the robots that visit your park are actually giving you money every round that you're there. Um, they pay you $3 to ride your rides every round. So over the course of six rounds, a robot that's been with you since the beginning has netted you $18, whereas building robots in the last round is only $3 a piece. This might be a little much for thinking for the kids that you might want to invite into the game. So 
really, it's about rolling dice and building rides and having fun. Uh, it's a beautiful game. The art, you can really tell that they took some time and figured out some really fun art, including this really pretty green tree. You'll see the green is really nice and pretty. There's like a princess castle. Um, everything has kind of a steampunk veneer. There's you know, rivets and steel and robots, but um, I'm not super worried about that. I, I know that games are adding on these themes because they're in vogue, but really, the game holds up on its own. Uh, I would say more times than not that this is going to be a hit if your family enjoyed a lot of King of Tokyo, Smash Up, anything in that vein. Even Escape, if you wanted something like Escape that wasn't quite so frenetic and didn't need the CD, I feel like this would fit right into that. Um, for those of you who are not worried about kid-friendly stuff, then maybe we figure something else out. I also bought Quantum this week, so we'll talk about that one later. But for now, Steam Park is a really good investment of not so many dollars, and the components are pretty top-notch. Even though they're kind of annoying to assemble, they're beautiful. So I would highly recommend it. Pick it up today, and we'll see you guys for my next review. Bye.